Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about batteries or kind of sounds weird when you put it like that, but I guess we can call this the battery guide. I'll be talking about what exactly batteries are, how they work and where we can kind of use them. Batteries are extremely important in the game, especially in JP and I will show you exactly why. That was a pretty short intro and I like that, so let's just keep going then. Let me first explain what a battery is. So a battery is essentially a character or some skill or something that charges TP. The reason why this is called a battery is because your TP gauge is effectively like a battery, right? So just to make sure you guys know exactly what I'm referring to, this blue bar here is the TP gauge. When the TP gauge maxes out, you can then cast your UB. What I'm saying is that batteries boost allies TP. So you can see here, Saren's skill actually recovers an allies TP by 295. Full gauge is a thousand points. So that means that you need a total of a thousand TP before you can cast your UB. So why exactly do you want to do this? There's a lot of utility around this, right? Especially in regards to defensive or offensive capabilities abilities. For some team compositions, especially in JP and some of our ones right now, you actually use batteries to make sure you get your burst off ASAP. In other comps, you can actually use it defensively, but we'll go into that a little bit later. Let's have a look at the currently available batteries and we'll start with Saren, who is one of our best batteries because she is so simple to use. The reason she is simple to use is because all you need to do is stick her close to somebody. When you stick that character close to Saren, you got to make sure that everyone else is far away from Saren. Saren's battery is really good because it means that you're always juicing up the same person. You can use this chart here and it will show you the distance from Saren. So you can see Saren is here at zero distance from herself. Then you got Anna who's only 10 away. This is just a quick way to form teams and I will link this down in the description below. So to summarize, Saren's is really simple, good TP boost to the closest ally. Next we've got Yuki and you'll realize that he actually gives the same amount of TP boost to the ally. However, the way that the TP boost works is a little bit different in which he actually gives the TP to the highest TP member. What this means is that the character that has the most TP at the time when Yuki is casting this will get the TP. That's really good because Yuki effectively doubles a TP boosting effect. This one is straightforward to understand but a little bit harder to work. However, the biggest I guess uh, takeaway from this is if you have another battery in the team, you can use Yuki to make it go even faster. That's essentially the TLDR. Obviously, it doesn't always work like that but that's pretty much like the summary. We've got other batteries kind of like Maho who's I don't really like her battery too much. It's only 50 TP. If you remember from before, Yuki and Saren's TP boost was actually about like 300 as opposed to 50. That's six times more than this. This is also tied to Maho's UB, which actually takes quite a while to charge up. However, when she gets six star, it gets a little bit bonkers, but let's talk about that in three years time. The last real one I want to talk about is Yukari, which is really, really flexible and strange. Yukari is actually kind of the opposite to Yuki, where she actually batteries the unit with the lowest amount of TP. You can see here that it's also the 295 amount. However, there's a couple of rules, I guess, around Yukari. So this is a Reddit post. Credits to Dr. Chia, who came up with this TP buff guide. It's actually a really good summary. There are a couple of edge cases, but for the most part, this will actually really, really help. So I've just expanded it here and let's actually go through each one and the utility of each. So the first one, what we're saying here is that when Yukari is in the first position here, the fourth position gets the TP buff. At this stage in the game, Yukari is just not tanking enough to take the first position. She will probably die to pretty much everything. Whilst this is nice, there are actually other ways to get the fourth position to get the TP buff. So let's move on from here. When Yukari is in the second position here, you can see Nozomi is in front of her. The second condition here is that there is a middle character behind Yukari. So the Saren or the Kokoro here, fourth position will get the TP buff. So in this case, it's going to be Kokoro. So the next case is when Yukari is in the second position and there are only back characters behind Yukari. You can see here, you've only got back characters. Then the fifth position actually gets the TP buff. I actually have an example of this and I'll show you very, very shortly. When Yukari is in the third position, right in the middle and the fourth position character is a middle character. So in this case, it's Kokoro. Then the Kokoro, the fourth position gets the TP buff. For this case, same Yukari position as above. However, your fourth position is actually a back character instead. So Yukari gets the TP buff. This one is a very interesting one. So it means that your Yukari can actually get her UB off faster. If you think about Yukari's UB, it's actually magic damage prevention. So you can imagine where this could really help, especially in a meta that's plagued with like Hatsune's and Anna's and stuff. Like you kind of sometimes find some utility for this. Here we've got Yukari in the fourth position. Then Yukari gets the TP buff. Simple as that. The reason why I don't like the fifth one too much is because it means that you're front loading all of your front units, right? I know that kind of sounds weird, but what this is screaming at me is like, you know, there's four units in front, you're going to be able to cleave them. You can run your Nozomis, your Shinobus, your Mitsukis, and like just freaking wreck these guys right here. I don't find much utility in this one or the first one. I think that she has a lot of utility in these like two to three to four. With that being said, however, there are a couple of edge cases and this is actually a pretty good summary of it all. I'm not going to go through each of these. There are just too many and I'll link this guy down in the comments below, but like you guys can go through 
through this. And when you're designing your teams, just make sure that you satisfy all of the rules. All right, guys. So with all that being said, I just wanted to showcase a couple of the examples where all of this actually works. So the first example that I'm going to be showing is when Yukari is in position two for both this team and this team. So what we've got here is that Yukari, if there is a middle character behind her, she will buff the fourth character. So we should be able to see Mahog receiving Yukari's buff. On the other hand, we've got a little bit more of a complicated case because we've got Saren juicing up Ninon. Ninon, I think, is about 15 units away from Saren. It's incredibly close. And then we've got Yukari juicing somebody else. So the rule goes, if Yukari is in the second position and there is at least one middle character behind Yukari, then she will juice the fourth person. Let's see if this actually plays out. So we're predicting that Yukari is going to juice Maho and Yukari is going to juice Saren on this side. I'm just going to click into the replay and let's have a look at what happens. So let's get this a little bit slower. Okay, cool. So we're expecting Yukari to juice Maho almost straight up. There we go. And that actually happened. Actually, you know what, guys? There's no way of me telling if the enemy Yukari actually juiced the Saren. I guess if the Saren gets like the UB off really fast, then then that's kind of it. But let's let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so Ninon gets her off because of the Saren, but that we already knew that. The Saren is extremely close to Ninon. Ninon will always get the TP buff from the Saren. And the Saren has still not UB'd yet, but we'll see what happens. Uh, there we go. Okay. So that is actually quite an early Saren UB, if I think about it. Like Saren usually gets her UB like way, way later. In my opinion, I think it checks out and the Yukari did indeed boost the Saren. I just wanted to mention guys, this is not really a traditional Ninon comp. Like usually there's a Yuki in here instead of a Yukari. Yukari boosting up Saren is not that great. Like Saren does have cleave, but it just doesn't do that much damage. However, on the flip side, you saw the idea here, right? Yukari boosting up Maho so that Maho can actually get her UB off faster. The reason why is because Maho's UB actually gives physical defense which is you know it's really effective against this team physical defense for everyone on this side you know it's physical aoe from all of these guys over here it's a cleave team it means that we're going to take much less damage when each of these characters cleave like all of my characters you see this 43k versus 49k oh baby ah is just mint. Here I've got another example from Huggy who's actually running the traditional Ninon comp, let's put it that way. So he's running his Ninon comp 47k into a 49k Mage Melt comp here. Let me talk through this first before getting into it. So we've got Saren juicing up Ninon because she's only 15 distance away from Saren. After Saren juices up Ninon, we've got Yuki who actually gives her TP to the highest amount of TP person at that time. That person is Ninon because she just received the juice from Saren. And Yuki is also going to buff up Ninon. However, in all of that, we've also got Hatsune who's going to slam her stun or whatever targeted attack into Ninon. I'm relatively confident that Ninon has the highest amount of attack in the team and so what that means is that Ninon is pretty much going to get an instantaneous ult off. Let's play through this and see how it goes. So I'm predicting just like crazy death. All right. I, oh damn, I can't slow this down. Oh, actually I can slow this down. All right, ready? We're going to watch Ninon's gauge. Guys, watch Ninon's gauge. She's going to get the big juice. That is from... I don't think that's even from Saren yet. I'm pretty sure that is just from Hatsune slapping that Ninon. Saren is doing the elegant ovation and Yuki is doing the cutest supporter. So after Saren juices the Ninon elegant ovation, you're going to see the Yuki actually juice the Ninon as well. Okay, ready guys? So... Guys, you don't even see the gauge. Look at... Like the, the next frame is she gets her UB off. This is crazy. Like, it's actually crazy. And you know that the Yuki actually juiced the Ninon because the TP has not gone anywhere else. Look, you can see the, the TP of the other characters. They just, it's it's still like really, really low, right? So that means that it actually worked. Well, I mean, of course it worked. Like, this is like one of the most studied comps of all time. All right, and then let's just play through and see what happens. It's pretty much carnage here. And uh, the, she smacks everybody there. I think you guys already know what happens, especially if you guys have watched my Ninon video. And she pretty much just like skill twos and kills everybody there. Look at those guys. <laughs> Look at those mages. They just got crippled. Oh my dear lord. And you look look at Ninon's TP. Look at Ninon's TP. And so what I forgot to mention in the Ninon video is that she actually gets TP back from killing people, which is relatively insane because she's about to get her UB off again. So there we go. And she goes and slaps them again. And then it's all over from here. Like this mage melt is donezo. I don't think I even need to show the rest of it, to be honest. So here we've got another double battery comp. This is actually the Tamaki battery. So what you usually run the Tamaki battery into is the Mage Melt comp. So I don't think it matters whether it's a front to back comp like this or if it features a Hatsune as well. In the Hatsune variant, the Hatsune usually attacks the Tamaki first and the Tamaki gets her UB off faster. It's a very similar concept to the Ninon comp, except here this is just built to beat this. It's a very similar concept to the Ninon comp, except here we're just building this to beat this one. All right, I'm gonna scrub through this real fast and let's see what actually happens here so 
I think what's going to happen is actually that was not really good. So we've got the cutest supporter from Yuki actually going to Nozomi, I think. So because Nozomi actually has the most TP at that point in time. So that's not too good. I don't think that always happens. In the Hatsune variant, usually Hatsune has already chunked Tamaki and Tamaki will therefore have more TP because guys remember like they will gain more TP as they take more damage. So all that means is that Yuki is normally supposed to boost Tamaki, but it's okay. We'll see what happens now because we also have the elegant ovation from Saren. So elegant ovation, you can see Saren about to cast it. It's just going to go to Tamaki and that's just how it is. And then we're just going to play through this. And then eventually the Tamaki is just going to go wreck carnage. So however, if I scrub back a bit, you can see that Yuki actually cast the cutest supporter again. And at that point in time, it was Tamaki. Tamaki got the boost and she goes on and kills that Kyoka. And there goes Saren again. And uh, hopefully our Nozomi actually uses up all of her TP so that our Tamaki can get it again. And uh, she does do that. And Tamaki is at the most amount of TP compared to the rest of the teammates. So she should get the next juice from Yuki. However, at this point in time, like the Tamaki, oh man, Tamaki is already popping off. Like this is already game over. So I'm pretty sure effectively what happens now is that Saren uses her boost. Yuki uses her boost and Tamaki is ahead of everybody. So there goes Yuki's and then we're going to get another boost to... Tamaki no to Nozomi again, but it doesn't even matter because like they're already so dead. Their tank is gone. They can't get through this Nozomi and it's freaking GG. So guys, I just want to talk about like how this all played out. I think you guys understand, right? The Hatsune hitting the Tamaki is actually one of the key points in this. It allows the Tamaki to pretty much get an instantaneous ult off and like chunk whoever has the highest M attack at that point. However, in this case, it didn't work because the mages were front to back. And so Tamaki didn't get uh, extra TP boost from that damage. The last one I wanted to showcase is when Yukari is in the second position and everyone behind her is actually a back character. From the chart, what we're saying here is that we're actually going to juice up the Yui here. For you guys who don't know, this is Princess Yui and essentially she is an AoE burst mage. She does it a lot better than everyone else. So let's actually see how this plays out. All right, guys, pay attention to the Yui. We're going to see Yui actually get juiced because she is the fifth position, right? So Yukari is going to cast and then boom, there we go. Look, Yui got the TP boost, and so Yui is going to be able to cast way faster than hopefully the enemy team. I don't think I saw any TP boosters, and hopefully, and let's freaking go. It's it's Yui time, and she is just going to slam the rest of their team, and it's it's freaking GG from here. This is this is how a lot of the JP meta goes. It's a it's a lot of TP boosting. It's a lot of like who can charge uh, like all of your UBs first, who can get them off first. And then on the opposite of that, you've also got like TP reducers, right? So you include TP reducers to make sure that your own team gets your UBs off first. Guys, we're almost at the end of the video, but I wanted to share one more thing, which is the calculation formulas for the TP gains. As you can see here, there are like four or so equations that relate to your TP. One, two, and three are methods of gaining your TP. And the fourth one is after you use your UB, how much TP do you have left? So what this is saying is that you should get 100 TP retained so you just keep you being over and over. That is not what happens, guys. That is why there is not enough TP retained in the game. But yeah, I'll drop this in the description below. It kind of helps, but I think that the other stuff that we covered today is a lot more important. I think as you can tell, Yukari is extremely versatile and she's probably the main focus of this video. All right, guys, we've actually made it to the end of the video. I don't think there's much left to be said, except there's going to be a lot more TP juices, a lot more batteries well into the future. I'm going to wrap up the video here and leave you guys with a secret message. TP gains. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. It means that you've made it to the end of the video, which is right here, and I am forever grateful. A lot of time and effort actually goes into these videos, especially getting footage from everyone. Thank you to everyone who submits the footage, like Huggy, you know, my boys, like, thank you guys so much. All right, with that being said, I think let's just call it quits here. If you guys have liked this video or like if this video has helped you, remember to like, subscribe, comment, subscribe. Yeah, you know, you know what it is. But otherwise, thank you guys as always for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.